at the end, as I'm having, I'm stood in a chair trying to hang myself. <laughs> why? The, <laughs> Because it's gone so wrong, I tried to kill myself. <laughs> well, that's why I got banned from the Pleasants because I was hanging at the Chortle Fast Fringe. Someone took the chair away, and I was just, I was actually dying. Really? <laughs> yeah, I so I came out, and, I, and the Chortle had just given me three stars that year for that show. And I was like, you fucking arse. I was like, so I threw it over the rigging. But I looked, when I threw it over the rigging, I saw that the rigging moved. I went, well, that doesn't look very stable. Oh. And then this guy just got up, and I was like, going, he's not really going to. And he just went, <laughs> So then I went, fuck. so I started hanging. I was going, ah, fuck. Like, I broke my neck. <laughs> but I thought, well, I can't grab the rigging because it might kill someone if it came down. So I was like, well, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> so I was just hanging, going, ah, that. And Joey Page, luckily. Rob Comic kills 40 yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chortle fast print. <laughs> three, three stars, five dead. <laughs> Year is with Red and Bobby. Hello! <laughs> no messing about, eh? No messing about. I'm hitting record. Is it not even said he's hit record yet? <laughs> Welcome to the Year is podcast. The podcast where every episode we go back to a year in history and look at whatever we could find on Google about that year. I bet it was your first, it was the first thing you clicked on as well, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, there's a few, you pa- few pages oh, come through. Yeah. <laughs> this week, Bobby is still MIA. Due to his ongoing legal difficulties, he is somewhere in the eastern part of this world. I won't disclose where. He contacted me via Encro chat last night. Um, Has he still got his Blue Yonder account? <laughs> yes, he's, he's got. Look, I don't want to go into it, but we just we wish him well and we hope that he clears up uh, what, whatever it is that's been going on. I'd like to put. He is missing. I won't say he's in action. No, he's if not, anything inactive. He's, he's done a runner. <laughs> but he's missing. Basically, yeah, he's wanted by uh, <laughs> Interpol, <laughs> and so he's laying low for a bit. Um, he suggested podcasting from the cave he's hiding in, but I thought that would be a bad idea. That's very early noughties, hiding in a cave. Well, it? people still do it. <laughs> Where else are you going to hide? Well, I don't, well, Where shrub- would you shrubbery. Hide, <laughs> Shrubbery. Anyway, sorry, this is Phil Ellis. Oh, yeah. yeah. You don't, you don't need no. to tell him. Yeah, we don't need to <laughs> tell him. He knew from the voice. Um, actually, though, we have had many requests for Phil Ellis on the show. So here Three. he is today. Three, but, you know, and it was the same guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's called just... Martin Ellis. <laughs> there are no followers and no posts. <laughs> and the same email as you. <laughs> That's weird, isn't it? Yeah, it's Good fucking... guy, Martin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Share about all those sure. hideous crimes. He, lo- he loves you. <laughs> well, he does love it too much. Yeah, he goes on about how great you are at comedy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, no leather jacket today, Phil. You're famous for your leather jacket. You're not yeah. wearing it too hot. It's too hot. Now, too stop I... in the summer. Well, I still used to wear it in the summer, but it's yeah. just I'm getting to an age now where I just can't, like, if I'm now sweating in a leather jacket in the street at 41, yeah. you look guilty. There's Whereas a difference. Like, of, yeah, there's yeah a difference. early 30s sweating, they can still get everything. Or maybe he's just done a gig or, you know, now. Exactly. Not a gig. There's two things uh, I've realised you can't do in your 40s now. One is sweat in public uh, and the other one's wink. Yeah. <laughs> you can't. Were you doing winking in your 30s? No, well, I've actually, I don't like to, I'm not put, pulling on any material here, but if you come to my new Edinburgh show, you'll hear all about my last wink. <laughs> really? <laughs> Which was 15 years ago. Do you want to give us a quick? Uh, no. No, okay. No, you'll have to come to the Edinburgh show. <laughs> where, is, where is the show? At the Monkey Barrel, uh, Hive Good 2. Good venue. Great venue, yeah. Yeah, nine in the morning. Uh, it's actually not <laughs> far off that, 12.30. 12.30. <laughs> Midday. Midday. Have a fry up, watch Phil Ellis. Best way to do it. Yeah, at the same time. <laughs> but you won't. So you won't get many piss people at your gigs. No, do you, get, but, you don't get much of a drunk audience anyway, do you? Yeah, I did, well, you know, yeah. we, we were living together last year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, and my show was not ready, so I just cancelled all the reviewers, and then some of them called me an arsehole for the, the arrogance of coming up. I went, well, it's a, it's free. Well, that, plus, not being funny, but my hour that's not ready is better than a lot of hours that are. Oh ready. yeah, yeah, so, yeah. There's some. There was, there, was, there was a show called Daddy Fuck the Nanny up there last year, which I'm sure was great, but, you know. Oh, I thought um, that was just like a health, public health walk. No, 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 it was a real show. <laughs> All right. Um, and apparently they played recordings from her dad sleeping with the nanny, real recordings. Oh, I heard about this. Yeah. We talked about it on the show before, I think, but it's worth it's worth delving into. If you are the it. nanny, get in touch. Get in touch, yeah. Do you remember when nannies just used to kill children in America? <laughs> And now they Remember can't. the innocent nineties, <laughs> <laughs> Brit pop, yeah. four weddings, <laughs> kill a nanny. <laughs> what a time! What a time to be an eighteen. Did you have a reviewer come to your show last year? Because 
you, can I give away your your twist to this last year's show? Yeah, it's all done now. I've, I've finished it. It was now. all about Phil's um, child that he was trying to form a relationship with. And then at the end you do, but then you reveal that you don't have a child and you were lying about the kid. Yeah, two twi- sake of, uh, twins. Two twins. Two twins. Yeah. And when they mixed race. <laughs> yeah, they were. That, that, someone at the end goes, uh, basically, do you tell them the truth and eventually I go, because well, I've done, th- so at the end there's three twists so that they think they've had the twists. Yeah. And then, so they think I'm getting married now and that's the big twist. And then I do this little like physical thing, which is a callback. So they go, that's a great time. And then the head job comes in to so go, oh my God, that's three twists. Yeah, so they go, well, that's it. In. And then he makes me tell them all that I've got kids and the disappointment on. But I've got friends in there that have been friends of mine for years who genuinely thought I had children. What was your kid called? Uh, Lucas and, and you uh, kept Maureen. Going about how <laughs> Lucas's eyes were just like, and you got really emotional. Yeah. Because for anyone who's not been to Edinburgh, a lot of shows in Edinburgh rely more on uh, sort of emotional um, stories mm. than jokes. So. And I've got. Nothing. So Nothing. I have to lie. No. <laughs> Just got, you make got a it leather up. jacket. <laughs> You've got a leather jacket. And um, I got a pocket full of blue tack. I'll the, probably pull that out at some point. <laughs> some physical stuff. What did the reviewers say about your kid that she thought it was like didn't get miss the twist? Oh yeah. Like, so one of the reviews never came out because they were talking to someone the day it was meant to come out because I told them not to come. Yeah. Because like, it wasn't ready. And they went, "Well, the arrogant. Well, so well, you can come if you want, but like." I'm not being funny, but I've already got five stars from your publication. So if yeah. you give me a one, I'm not going to put that on the book. So like, well, you yeah. can give me one if you want. But I was like, I just want to use a month to get. It's why I used to think Edinburgh, because I've already had my year in Edinburgh, which was amazing. And I love going up. But I think the point is for me, I want to just work on a show and experiment and get yeah. it together. I sound like such a wanker, but you know, no, no, but no. I'm not going up there to win anything. So that's why my shows are so cheap. Because you've already won up there. I've already won it, mate. Would you win 2014? Yeah, yeah. Pound price. Pound, and, um, pound price. Sorry. <laughs> pound price. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good. Still counts. Still good. counts. Yeah. It was, the, the year afterwards, it was won by a shed. <laughs> by a shed? <laughs> Bob's shed with the reading out. Oh, the war. Yeah, the war. Yeah. The, the, the war diary. What the fuck oh, was. yeah. Didn't Grace Campbell headline that? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> they read out the Chilcot report, didn't they? Yeah. That, and yeah, the okay. comedians. Yeah. yeah, and then one year everyone won it. Mm. So that, I mean, might, that might, yeah, that must have made you feel a bit. Well, it just made me feel. Um, well, it, it's right. That's where I should feel like a piece of shit for <laughs> winning anything. Did you win ten time. grand? Because that's the main that's five for panel. That's still good. Yeah, it's all right. Nice. But what did you uh, spend the five grand on. Uh, I evenly distributed it across my favorite charities. <laughs> Debit <laughs> credit cards. Well, I so, I so I was like in so much debt yeah. that year. Uh, not to put too fat, but I was in a, around thirty thousand pounds worth of Fuck. credit cards and everything. What so just I was paying for Edinburgh? And- just always been in debt, but chain yeah. smoking, spend all the money. Grand on fags. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, well, yeah. Well, yeah. You spend thirty quid a day on fags. It's How like many that. were you smoking? Well, I was 40, 60 a day. No. Yeah. So Fucking all these stupid things and just being an idiot. And so when I won the panel <laughs> prize, then I got paid for the pilot. The money I got for the BBC pilot was yeah. so much. Yeah. So I didn't know. So I asked the my my agent said that it's this much for this script, and I went, "Oh right," and I went, "Oh fuck, that means I'm almost out of debt." And they went, "Oh, that's for two scripts, so double it." And I went, "So that was out of debt." So I, and what was my right hand stopped working? <laughs> Tell you about the claw. No. So I just woke. So about three days later, I woke up, and my right hand just wouldn't work. Like it would do that. I could grip, but it wouldn't, like, the wrist wouldn't do. So there's no other... So I was like, well, this is weird. So I spent a week just walking. I thought it would start working eventually. So people were going, what's wrong with your hand? I went, I don't know, weird, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, so I went to the doctors, and the doctors went... So basically they said, um, have you had any big changes in your life recently? I went, oh, yeah, so I'm out of debt for the first time. They went, all right, so what's happened is your brain has not been able to process something. So <laughs> it's panicked and it's given you a claw. And I went, what? So, so I, my body rejected success, yeah. basically. When, no. yeah. So my body just didn't know how to cope with success. No, so so it just shut down one side of me. So if you watch the pilot, which I rec- no one did, but if you watch the pilot... <laughs> Where's that on BBC? I don't know where that. I'm sure that's in a... I've buried it in the garden. Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, I can't use my right hand on it. So I'm doing a kid's show, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got this horrible claw. So, the, so we had to edit out loads of clapping because I kept trying to make it like my hand was working. So I was going, get it! Let's go! <laughs> I've got to like, put my hand around a kid at one point and it's just bright red because all the God. blood, and it looks horrible like a lobster claw. <laughs> it just slinks over. But um, 
Yeah, so then luckily I wasn't successful for more than three months, so my hands start to <laughs> yeah, work again. again. Yeah, <laughs> thank God. What's it like? I've never had a good Edinburgh. What's it like? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a good email. No, no, but you are. But <laughs> and no one's ever said yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you act like you're having a good uh, Edinburgh. You're out partying, having a great time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. give off the impression that it's going very well. <laughs> No, I think I tell everyone it's going shit, but just at four in the morning. Yeah, but you had a good Edinburgh last year. Yeah, it was fine. I just don't enjoy it that much. No. But I've never been the talk of the fringe as you were in 2014. Yeah, that was nice. Were people nice to you? Yeah. No one gobbed at you in the street? No, a lot of people were nice to me that weren't before, and then, again, they don't stick around for very long. (laughs) (laughs) So that's interesting. Uh, But, yeah, no, it's all good, you know, just... (laughs) Why well, show your show Au Revoir, which I think you should do again live because it was so brilliant. Thank you. You're in it. I it's was so in well. it. I was in it. I had to arrive late and it was you know, a lot of fun. A lot of interaction. Yeah. Uh, a lot of fun. props. Have you thought about putting that on again? Just as a. No, well, it was one of those shows. And the problem with some of my shows is they only really exist in Edinburgh, like, and outside, doesn't it? So they worked in Soho. Yeah, but. I... I'm trying to do it. So this year's just me being a dick for an like just messing about and having mm-hmm. f- fun for an hour. So it's like it's just it, they're all it's all just little bits of stand up and other bits. Uh, I'm trying not to do too many in jokes about the industry. However, I have found that I am now making fun of every type of comedy at each point in the show. Yeah, which is uh, you know without me doing any comedy. Have good, you? So you, <laughs> good, what, you mentioned the industry comedy. quite a lot. I try not to, but it's so hard. Like when you, your entire life, have you pissed life... any industry people off? But with with your with oh, your shows, yeah, no one likes me. No one likes me. I mean, I was just for the audience. I knew that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I I was thinking about this the other day. Why there's such a class divide in comedy? And I'll tell you what it is. And with this, I won't tell you what it is. This is my opinion. Is that a lot of producers and people in, in a position of power are from a certain background. Of course. Which is, I'm not having to go at anyone. God forbid you don't book me for... You don't book me anyway. Give a fuck. <laughs> so, um, but the point is, right, so when I had the level of success I had, I was now in meetings with a lot of producers. Now, yeah. now I didn't know how to talk to these people because I just thought you were meant to be funny. So I'd go in with a slightly relaxed attitude because it was all, to me, comedy's a laugh. Whoopee cushion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Honk, S- smell every- my flower. <laughs> water in the face. Yeah, yeah. doing loads of sketches. Missing my, missing my mouth with the water. Rollerblades. <laughs> <laughs> Dead rabbit in a hat. <laughs> yeah. So I'd go in, and also, if you ever go to an industry uh, f- place with a free bar, you're not meant to absolutely rinse. It I know. It, I know that. that. Yeah. I did a Foxton's uh, interview in my when I was about twenty. And they had a bar with Peronis, and I was the only one who took one. And I, I didn't get called back, and I think that was the same. It's weird, yeah, it's that kind of thing. Like, So I would just go, one, I didn't know how to talk to people. So if someone approached me with an idea I didn't like, I wasn't trying to be rude, but I'd, th- I'd go, on, well, this is a bad idea. Yeah. Now, you're not meant to say that. I didn't know that. And you're not meant to. I mean, they want to discuss, and obviously, also, you sometimes you've got to realise your ideas are dog shit as well. Yeah, so I yeah, go yeah. in with stuff, and it was interesting sometimes that they go, you're never going to get this made. It's a mix of the right. two, isn't it? It's like those damn producers, but then sometimes when you let someone have too much power. Yeah. Know. I've worked with some amazing producers mm. and they've helped me shape and realise what the thing should be. I've gone with one angle. And then, so it wasn't so much, it, I think it was just kind of, I didn't. I thought I'd get to do a few things and trial and error and get something to work. Now, I didn't realise I was turning things down because they sounded so bad. mm but I thought I was going to get offered other things. Now, I didn't realise the way things worked out. I was, it seemed everyone thought I was just solely linked into the BBC. Uh, and then it went to a series, and then that fell through, through again, poor communication between everyone involved. I thought they just said, oh, we weren't doing it, but they thought I'd pulled it. It okay. was just ridiculous. Uh, so all these things. But basically, like, I just went in with such a lacklustre attitude because I just thought it's just meant to be fun. I'll just carry on and have a laugh. I really wish I'd really wish with my time again, I'd have focused a bit more. I I made a lot of mistakes, but equally, this is what I was saying about the class of design. So when you're from a certain uh, background, when you've been educated in a certain manner, you, you kind of taught built into that is how to talk to people in these positions and people in those positions are probably from the same background as you more than likely. So they just feel more comfortable chatting to a privately educated 
a posh person, basically. Yeah. And that's not... Whereas you're there with, with a whip it. Yeah, uh, but I'm there, scratch card. I'm there asking <laughs> for some hot water from a bovril yeah. and, uh, and trying to steal the hubcaps. You're the Kestrel yeah. from Ken Loach, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm just hiding down your blade, trying to use a mouse. <laughs> yeah. How does this work? No, yeah. fuck off. <laughs> Put it in a bins with your teeth. <laughs> has Ken Loach ever been what, to a fucking what, what's estate? A, what's a TV series, governor? <laughs> <laughs> He's been on the old wire. He said, oh, what? <laughs> yeah, go on. <laughs> but that's it. I don't know. I don't, and I, what? So, um, so I just think that's why you will see more voices. Like, there's a lot of diversity on TV in a certain manner, but really they all went to private. Yeah, schools. and I think there's so, definitely there's certain that, shows that really play towards private educated middle class people. Yeah, um, yeah. A lot of panel shows do that and stuff like that because they all debate from. Well, you don't want me on, have I got news for you, do you? No. Yeah. Playing darts. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 his slot's trying to say something wit witty about Boris Johnson. But on the other hand, I think stand up, if you look at the arena fillers in this country, you look at some of the, I think like Mickey Flanagan, Rob Beckett, um, John Bishop, Kevin Bridges, Peter Kay. Peter Kay. Um, yeah, they were working class, mostly working Northern. Northern, Sarah Millican. Um, yeah. I think Kathy Burke, these sorts of like, I'd say the top, if you put the 20 biggest comedians in this country, and I don't mean the people who work the most, I mean the most popular, I'd say they'd be working class, was yeah. that not fair? So this is the thing that I mean, this is what I find interesting. People who like comedy and go to comedy want to see working class people. Yeah. The people in charge don't want to see working No, people. and they don't like... So. They don't like people like Peter Kay or Mickey. They, they yeah, see well, it as dirty. You can slag go, off Peter Kay. They go, laughs are dirty. Him. Whereas they yeah. want to see a working class person at the Soho Theatre rallying against Margaret Thatcher or something well, like yeah. that. You I, know, they don't want to hear about garlic bread. It's you so know? funny how you get pigeonholed. Like, so you, you kind of can only exist as a working class comic if you talk about being working class all the time. When I, in when, that realm. But yeah, so the arena wonder, world doesn't care I about that. I can't tell you how many times I was in a room and I'm not joking, they would go, Phil, you're funny. You're working class. You're northern. I was going, what the fuck? That's not who I am. I'm not, I don't give a fuck about that working yeah, class. Yeah. I wasn't down a mill. I worked in an airbags factory. And my dad was a forklift driver. My mum was a cashier. But then they got their own business. Like, we lived in a nice house. Now they're on ITV2. And now they're on ITV2. <laughs> but, you know, I wasn't they're, fucking... They made the Sopranos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, but it's like, I wasn't. I don't know what. That's not a selling point for me. I'm not that no. working class. And so, but what I mean is, I'm just not from the, the right. But also, right. I'm also. I've got no. I'm under no uh, potential. There's loads of reasons I didn't hit the ground running and no. succeed because it's just. But so you're still hard. doing very well. Doing all right, I'm but it's like well. not got quite where I want to be. Very respected, Joe. Oh, I even say this. Someone put out a press release for me the other day mm. and within it said he's the comedian's comedian. Now, yeah. how is that I'd selling agree. you? Um, because it means that <laughs> everyone you like likes this guy. And I think it means you're inventive and you do stuff that comedians look up to and go, that's great. You know? Well, I wish they'd retweet me once in a while. I, I think I'll, I, I, I retweet you from <laughs> You do all the time. Yeah, 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 I do. It's too much, actually. <laughs> this is getting creepy. I think that's probably where people are. Well, <laughs> um, Fred's going to give him the sound. We do a Patreon proof. episode of this, which I, I need you to stay around for because uh, I'm not doing it on my own. And uh, maybe, maybe we could delve into some of his stories for our inside team. Yeah, yeah, of, that sounds of good. Why, why your life is absolutely... <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm sorry, Phil. No, it's all right. I've, uh, yeah, life's pretty good. How's your life? It's fine. I mean, it's worse than yours, probably. No, it's not. You're no, all right. No, I'm good. I'm good. I mean, I haven't, even, I haven't even had the uh, the three months in the sun yet. <laughs> no, I know. So I'm waiting for it. It's not worth I won't bother. No. I mean, I'll, I'll, just... I'll probably fuck it up as well. So there you go. Yeah. Well, I, maybe when you do, can I come back? <laughs> can I hang around with you? <laughs> hey, <it's> just... <laughs> I'll block you. Who's that bloke months? at the buffet? <laughs> Yeah, Reds unblock me. His, his pilot's clearly not been made to series. <laughs> anyway, Phil, we are now going what? back to the year of your birth. I wish I could. I'd push me back in. Nineteen eighty one. What's the scene of your birth? Where uh, are it was, we? It was in a, it was near a bin. <laughs> it was Preston Mill. 
Preston uh, mine. Yeah. You, open cast mine. You were in a horse and cart. Your dad's in a horse and cart. Yeah, my dad wasn't present. No, okay. <laughs> Dad wasn't present. My mum was, wasn't present emotionally. You were, you were ra- a kestrel raised you. Pulled me out. Yeah. I was tethered to a kestrel. They nice. pulled me out, a whip it bit off the umbilical cord, <laughs> and I was flown immediately to, to work. <laughs> Yeah, that was put to work in the mill. In the mill and given a pint. Yeah, uh, given a pint and a fag and I was collecting bobbins. And do you know what, Ray, as you're looking back, it was the happiest, uh, happiest, times happiest of your life. one day of my life. Did you grow up in Preston then? Was that the... I did, yeah. Well, I Tom Finney, up. the Preston plumber. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now someone's done the research. Footballer from the Footballer, 50s. Footballer Tom Finney from uh, Preston North End. Come on, Wasn't he the first guy on £100 a week or was that someone else? I can't remember. I can't Back remember. then, hundred quid the a week. First, he was the first guy to punch a cow. Really? In during a match. Fucking hell, why did you punch the cow? Well, I mean, well, what it was in the way for a start. You can't. But why is the cow goals. doing it? The well, that's why he was. <laughs> we know that's why he punched it. Yeah. I think is he was true? confused. No, he's not. No, for <laughs> God's sake! <laughs> you never know. A dog ran on the pitch in the surreal. World Cup. Hey? Dog ran on the pitch in the World Cup. Really? Yeah, in like the sixties. What? There's not in the sixties. Jimmy then. Greaves had to tackle the dog to the floor. <laughs> Wow. It's a lot of football trivia for you. That's good. But uh, you know, it's weird that £100 a week was like the top level football. Like, I was thinking the other day, I was like, if I took my wages now and went back to like the 1700s, I still wouldn't be the richest guy. You know what I mean? I'd be, I'd be like middle class. <laughs> I live in a one bed in Hyde Park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be quite. It'd be, uh... It's true, though, isn't it? You always hear that. I remember hearing old stories like when I listen to podcasts about comedians. Like, oh, back in the days, you know, it was 1973, and we we drive like six hours for these gigs that are paid five hundred dollars, and you're like, that sounds amazing. That's like yeah. four grand now. What the I, fuck are you talking about? Of what like what I don't understand is when I started stand up. So like I was on when I was I found one of my old wage slips from the airbags factory. Mm. So I used to work 12 hours shifts. <laughs> is I this know, real? Yeah, I don't it's trust real. anything you say. Everyone thinks I make If you've ever been to one of Phil's shows, this is what it's like. And it's always a fucking lie. <laughs> it's true. I was, I used to work at airbags factory. Yeah. I'd work six in the morning until six at night. And then I'd have three days of that. And then three days off. And then airbags start... of cars. Yes. As so there's three to... days you do off. Would you go mad and then like, or just drink loads and then? Oh, I, would, like, I had no. I didn't know anyone because we'd moved to this town, Congleton. I'd had no friends. The, I, I only worked there. with two people. There. there was a guy called Jimmy. Who was seventy. I had no knees, and there was a guy <laughs> who was a paedophile. <laughs> <laughs> Turned out it was a paedophile. It was the only person I got on with really? in the factory. Fuck. And I was like, I've not seen him for a while. And someone put a paper on my desk. I went, oh, of course he's a paedophile. Oh, the one no. person I got on with is a paedophile. Yeah, God. And now he works at the BBC. Oh, <laughs> oh my. My God! <laughs> See, gags like that—that that would, that would get me on mock the week, um, <laughs> which has now been cancelled. <laughs> yeah, um, and what, 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 sorry, the guy with no knees. How did he work? Well, he, uh, he just sat down. Yeah, he two sort of, Well, he had knees. knees that were just so bad. He'd like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Take him ages to get to his. That's machine. horrible that he still had to work. Mm. Well, I think he quite. He was horrible. Oh, was he? Yeah, yeah. so he enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like what, what did you have to do in the airbag factory? Well, I worked in an area where uh, I made parts. I cut, so it's like I was in cutting. Oh, God, this is so fucking boring. But it was a self-contained factory, so it was woven. The airbags were woven there, coated, cut, and then put together. So I worked in uh, cutting, but I wasn't on a – whereas everyone else had to hit like a target, mm. I was cutting parts that went on those bags so it didn't affect any of the – all I had to do was make sure there's enough parts so the production could use them, right? So basically, no one knew what I did. So I would get, and eventually, Jim's knees wore out so he couldn't come to work anymore, and, and the other guy was now in prison for being a paedophile. <laughs> so I ended up being the only person in my area cutting. So no one quite knew what I did. As long as there was enough parts that they would come down and get them to do that, I could... So I would go in at six in the morning and I found the perfect toilet, which was like a door that went all the way to the floor yeah. and it had enough room I could stretch out in and I had a toilet roll in my locker that was the right size to put behind my head. <laughs> so I'd go and get a boost and a coffee. I'd go in the toilet, I'd sit there, I'd eat my boost and then I'd fall asleep for an hour and I always went with a clipboard. So then I'd come out after an hour like, Ugh, that's bad. And then, and then like, the, the, the manager would go, where have you been? And I go, just checking parts. And he go, all right. <laughs> and that was it. So I just, and then, Great. And you only got a 25-minute break every day. You have three 25-minute breaks. Three 25-minute breaks, though. But I would take an hour because I realised that they, they sent the shift in two halves. 
So I'd wait for them all to go, and I'd go, oh, I'm going on the second break. Bye, everyone, because he had to walk past me. So as soon as they went out, I'd leave it for about a minute, and then I'd just go out the other door. I'd get in my car and drive home. And then I would just stay there for the whole hour and come back and pretend I'd gone on the second break. Oh, so nice. I was a real piece of shit, to be honest. And um, uh, But then they, you had to use clocking cards. that really fucked me over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, so that was my life at the airbase factory. But I found my wage set. Do you know what? I was on a, a week. How much? I, have I guessed, right? So 80 12, pounds. Well, it's 80 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's actually illegal, I think. It's illegal in the 70s. Yeah, so. yeah okay. So how old were you? So I was doing 12-hour shifts. I was 21 at the time so I started. So £4 pounds an hour, maybe you're on for it. Uh, £200 pounds a week? It was £181. Pounds Fuck. Because it went through an agency and they would take Yeah, I did thing. that. I had a job yeah. where I had to mop and sweep these houses, like big housing, high-rise estate. And I remember doing it for two weeks and I was like, this is horrible. And I got my paycheck and the agency took a load of it and it was like 180 That's per insane. week. And I thought, oh, I've, at least I've clocked up like 500, 600 quid and it was like 300 and six, you know, just it's so, so shit. It's so grim, isn't it, yeah. But yeah. then, so when I got my first paid gig, I think it was 80 pounds in Durham Amazing. on a Friday. And I was like, this is incredible. Mm. Going. Uh, and then my car broke down on the way out <laughs> and it cost me 300 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I had to sleep in the car at a service station that was a service station that clearly stopped being a service station yeah and all it had was a 24-hour mcdonald's and it was it was Friday the 13th stuffing chips yeah, into yeah. the engine <laughs> i had to walk Crying. through the drive through <laughs> pouring <laughs> coca-cola in. please <laughs> i walked through the drive through mm. and, and, and they went yeah can you move down to the next window i was like oh really <laughs> such a worn down cars in <laughs> but then so when i started i was like and then when you see the wages they haven't gone up some have gone down no but gigs are, gigs haven't gone up yeah. I did a gig the other day and the act on the bill was like, you know, we used to get this in 1996. It's insane. And he's like, well, that would pay your rent back then. I'm like, fuck off. And the argument is always, well, when it's empty, you're going to go. It's like, yeah, but your ticket prices have gone up. And fuel is a joke. What is going on? Why fight the fight. <laughs> Working class. Yeah. Hi, <laughs> Daniel Blake. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's bad because it's affecting the middle class as well now. Me, you know, yeah. which is that's that's when that's, what we're really, that's when you really got to start getting alarmed. You know, I always remember <laughs> that red dwarf joke um, when they said it was like the Time Slides episode, and the, it's a fake news thing, and it goes uh, article. It goes some terrorists were trying to poison uh, the Evian um, water facility. Mm. It says if it had been successful, we think the entire middle class would have been wiped out. <laughs> 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 I just, whenever I see bottled water, I always, think of middle, yeah. I always feel middle class if I buy water. I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> it doesn't make you know you get the like 17p ones in Morrison's, the giant fizzy. Yeah, they're the same, aren't they? It's well, yeah, but it's, how do you get? I mean, you know it does feel on... good in a glass bottle. Yeah. You feel like you're at a meeting with Tom Cruise. Yeah, yeah. Plus, you could always use it to fend him off if you he gets yeah, into troubles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, I will say this. I love Tom Cruise. Yeah. As, an, I, as a film star, that he's the the, be, the only film star mm-hmm. in my eyes at the moment since the star system has now been completely degraded. I. Uh, <laughs> why, why do you think that, then? Well, it has been. So it's all IP. You know, Marvel, everything, has made it so that a brand and a, a bigger character the... is bigger than an actor. Yeah, Tarantino so, was saying this, wasn't it? Yeah, so there's no act, there's no big stars anymore. You've probably got Brad Pitt um, and Tom Cruise, but everyone else just goes to Netflix and they're just interchangeable. Yeah. So well, like, who's the Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise? I think DiCaprio. Well, DiCaprio did that Netflix Don't Look Up, which mm. fucked him because now he's gone from you have to go to the cinema if you want to see a DiCaprio film to, oh, he'll be oh, on the stream. Oh, is that fucked him? I think so, yeah. It's, it's devalued him as a star. Well, it's devalued maybe... But the thing is, Tom Cruise does action movies, whereas DiCaprio doesn't. And action movies mm. are, you have to see this in the cinema. What about that one where he got assaulted by a bear? That wasn't an action. Yeah. That, was, <laughs> that was three hours of him dragging along. Cocaine bear. On his, <laughs> yeah, cocaine bear. <laughs> that was him just dragging himself along. I don't like floor. Tom Hardy. Where are we going to discuss this? When oh, are we going I, to discuss I, I this? Agree. I agree. I, I was crap. actually talking about this the other day, yeah. <laughs> he's, the thing is, women, he's obviously guy, not women crap, love so. Tom Hardy because he's a good, great-looking guy. But and he, he's not a bad actor, but he's not great, you know. No, I just find him. What's he been? I thought he was good in the Revenant, but I thought I just Bronson never get was, excited watching him. I, I just watched him see a guy Capone acting. It was really boring. It was so overdone. Which one was that? He did a film about Al Capone. Oh God, yeah, going just, mad. And you know, it's when you know when an actor goes, "Oh, this guy's going to go nuts." You're like, "Oh, you're just going to indulge yourself here, aren't you?" Yeah, there's some actors, aren't there, that just get really far and I don't get it. And then there's ones like Guy Pearce, who I love. 
And I'm always like, why hasn't Guy Pearce had a better He's probably career? quite picky with what he does, and he's not a heartthrob. He's fit in Memento. Yeah, but he's not Tom Hardy good looking, you know? Yeah, I suppose. That's the, that, that's the issue there. Sorry, Guy. Well, he's going to be all right. I think he's going to be on my new sitcom. <laughs> it's online. He's in the next season of Stand Up yeah. Sketch. <laughs> <laughs> that sketch about trying to find his wife's killer. Yeah. Oh. So I'm looking everywhere, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keep forgetting things. <laughs> it's just him looking in a cupboard. What are they I often do a bit of stand-up now and I think about how the stand-up sketch show would do it and how my friends would act that bit out. I've got a bit about a mouse coming through a door and I've always imagined just I would just get someone like fucking... I will just get Liam Pickford to dress up as a mouse for it. Gosh. Liam Pickford's a comedian. Liam Pickford is a comedian. I bought his car for 50 quid. Was that the one that broke down after the gig? <laughs> no, no, no. No, this is a bright red 2004 Volkswagen 50 quid? Beetle. Have you still got it? Yeah, it actually works really well. Really? Why did he sell it for £50? Pounds? Because he's lazy. Couldn't be bothered getting rid of it. And I told him he could get 350 quid for scrap, but he just said, no, just have it. So then I, I went, well, I've got to give him some money. So I thought I'll give him £100. Pounds. And as mm. I was walking towards it, it was just covered in leaves with two flat tyres and the battery was gone. And you just... So I just started leafing out. I was already <laughs> said, I've got money for you. He went, oh, you don't have to do that. I was going, oh, fuck, is that <laughs> it? So I'm trying funny. to get as much out as I could. <laughs> so I ended up going, 50 now, sorry. I went, there, 50 yeah, quid. Yeah, I, yeah, I think he's just yeah. giving me a problem here. <laughs> but no, it's the best car I've ever had. Nice. And I've had three. You've had three cars. <laughs> Wow. Look at, look at the camera like a fucking... <laughs> I love it if it's not on. <laughs> yeah, none of this is on. <laughs> we just came to fuck with you. That's the twist at the end. Um, oh, yeah. 1981. Good year for Alice's. What, what year were you born? 1981. Oh, sorry, what, sorry, what month were you born? October. Oh, well, in Not giving you the exact... My first dog's name. What was, what was the date of your birth? Well, we don't need to. I'm not giving everyone my date of birth. Why? Might, well, they'll go back in time and kill you as a baby. Like, <laughs> what, are you, what are you worried about? I'd welcome. I suppose they could. What you do if I just disappear your, now? Back into your account and, and steal your car. <laughs> that would be such a good podcast. So if I do, then say my date of birth, and then I instantly disappear. <laughs> Someone has corrected the timeline. <laughs> I disappear, and you've got a mullet. Yeah. <laughs> why, why, why did the those two link happened? up? Yeah. But yeah, the first London Marathon was held in 1981. Wow! Yeah, <laughs> what yeah. a year! What a year! You ever hey, done the London Marathon, Phil? Yeah. No, you haven't. No, I haven't. I don't even watch it. No, no I didn't think. I used to like it when that bloke with the cigars used to do it. That Who was, was that? Who was that one? He used to have long hair. Oh, 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 oh. what Jimmy Savile? Oh yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he did used to do it. Fucking. He never bloke used with to do it. He used to get a lift, <laughs> yeah. and then he'd jump out. Oh, I th- he was a man of his word. He yeah. did it. Say what you want. Say what you want about Savile, but he did those. He did do the marathon. Oh shit! The bloke with the cigar. <laughs> do you ever see my favourite thing about? I don't know why I always think about it. My favourite. Norm Macdonald used to do his chat show online. It was just incredible, and it was. Um, he interviewed Stephen Merchant, but he kept talking about Jimmy Savile, but he just kept pronouncing. And it's Seville. <laughs> really, yeah, so much yeah. like, it's not an old vaudeville fucking act. <laughs> yeah, Seville. Jimmy Seville. <laughs> Jimmy Seville. Yeah. Uh, yep, 7,000 yeah, people great. participated in the first marathon with 6,255 participants completing the 25, 26 mile race. Who won? Uh, do, 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 do. First winners were Dick Beardsley <laughs> and Ing oh, so Simonson for the men crossing the finish line together and Joyce Smith together. For the yeah. No, well, like, do you think they just went, come on, let's do it together? <laughs> let's win together. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Possibly. Pushing a child to the ground. Yeah, it was <laughs> created by clothes lining. Chris Brasher and John Disley with the intention to raise money for charity. And hence. With the intention. The intention. But, then, but they did. Spawning, they forgot. <laughs> spawning so many emails, notifications, DMs. Please, yeah. can you sponsor me? Because I'm going to be running the London Marathon. Have you ever done a sponsored event? Yeah, we're sponsoring Jody. He's uh, he's getting in a nappy and he's going to slide <laughs> down the <his> shard. <laughs> <laughs> no, what, he's doing something quite similar. What are you doing, Jody? Uh, yeah, I'm going to abseil down the walkie-talkie skyscraper. Really? In September. Yeah, but I've got to like run up the stairs first. That's the bit I'm most worried yeah, about. Forget- oh how, many st- how many flights? It's forty-two stories. Fucking fuck that joke. Yeah, yeah. you got to I'm run. Die. Are you gonna be? Up? I don't know about die. running. You just got to make your way up there somehow. I'm just yeah. gonna go find oh a lift, God. I think. But so I, yeah, I, 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 donate, <laughs> I donated to Jody. I donated a fiver. 
And one of our eagle-eyed listeners saw that and thought it was so insulting and wrote in saying, because well, like, they can just see it on Jodie's GoFundMe page and it says reverence and five pounds. Oh my God. And yeah, then well, there was you a backlash. You can't hide that, you know. Yeah, I didn't. I just didn't think anyone was going to look. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted Jody to know I'd given money, but I didn't want you know the public to see how little. Um, <laughs> and then there was a huge backlash amongst our listeners. And then how much did they donate to spite me? Yeah, it must have been a couple of hundred quid. Yeah, yeah some donating five pound, one p. Yeah, everyone yeah, just donating it. Oh, that's yeah, good. Yeah. So I earned him three hundred pounds. Yeah. But that was my plan all along. Well. Yeah. If you really want to show him who's boss, put money in my account, <laughs> £5, 1p plus, because he only put a fiver in my account the other week. <laughs> Do your no, best, internet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to bring this back, by the way. How's that? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's horrible, isn't it? Yeah. 41-year-old man doing that. You could do the 118 ads account. in the marathon running. I could see you doing that. I'd love to do ads. Yeah. Um... I uh, I turned down an ad years ago. What was it? For Go Compare. Really? Yeah, but I didn't... I oh, was so fucking stupid. It was my first Edinburgh show 10 years ago, and it was the one when I was in my full Andy Kaufman phase of being like... And the show was all about everything falling apart, blah, blah, blah. So I thought, stupid... So I went for an audition. We were saying before they started about advertising, doing, going for auditions, and when you don't care, you almost get stuff. So I'd done an audition for, <laughs> for an ad that involved Ferrero Rocher. Mm-hmm. No, it's no, it was for bargain booze. We're giving away free Scotch eggs. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is my fucking life. And I couldn't get that right. Do you know who got the ad? It was yeah. someone who was so, and I'm not being horrible, unwell, that they tried to get changed in the foyer, like in the reception area. He went, oh, and I got, I brought a suit to wear, and she went, all right then. And he started undressing. She went, no, no, can you do it somewhere else? She went, oh, sorry. And they went and did it out just in the hallway. I was like, there is a toilet there. He mm. got it. Really? Because he thought he was be- he thought it was an act. Oh, really? No. So I went in, all guns blazing. <laughs> Love Scotch eggs. Nothing. Not a whiff of ginger. So I then... Um, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Do you know where I got that from? What? I got that from Bottom Life. Really, yeah. Too. And I don't think I, anyone knows what it means, <laughs> but it's still my favourite phrase. Not a whiff of ginger. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I think I shared that on Facebook once, that Bottom Life too. I, I'm yeah. a year younger than you. Me and my brother, who's a couple of years younger than me, we were both really into it. Mm. Um, but I knew that the video of Bottom Live, the first one, was 18. Yeah. Uh, but I knew my parents didn't know that. So we like yeah. got them to take us, me, my younger brother, the eleven, and then my sister nine, to Hammersmith <laughs> Apollo oh, did to you watch go Bottom to Live it? too. Yeah, oh, yeah, wow. and then but all everyone else going, why have they brought their kids? <laughs> <to this?" laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so How good. did you yeah. even get in? Were there not people going no? No, these were like more relaxed times. Different yeah. times. Well, yeah, I remember. Yeah. That's great. I, I, do you remember like nightclubs, like fourteen-year-old girls, the bouncers would turn a blind eye. <laughs> Getting into this discussion. <laughs> <laughs> this is some only trap. No, when I when, when, when I was <laughs> what have you heard? this interview is over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get a cease and desist from Phil's lawyer. No, when I when Phil I talked about like, clubbing with fourteen-year-old girls. When I was fifteen, every girl in my year would go would go night clubbing. No, I was just yeah. like, but they never let the boys in. I always find it funny that girls in my when they were fourteen used to get picked up by their boyfriends in the cars, <laughs> and that was fine. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, sure, this isn't right, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Well, I, uh, but I don't know. Yeah, I suppose it's. Uh, I couldn't even get in to see Judge Dredd. I was going no, to no, forever. no. But that's what I mean. I remember trying yeah. to watch The Mummy too and get an ID, and I'm like, everyone in my ears going doing ease in a fucking nightclub. <laughs> Why can't I get into Mummy too? My, funny enough, my first. Uh, my first bottom, my first bottom <laughs> was bottom live too, because my mum worked at Asda when it came out, and I'd seen the, and it was re- weird because I knew of bottom and young ones and stuff. But this is how I got really into them, was into comedy. To be honest, was bottom live too because it was I saw the advert, it looked really funny. My mum worked at Asda and she got ten percent off everything, so she got the ten uh, percent off the ninety nine p off of it. It was nine ninety nine. And I got that, and that was it. That was how I got into Bottom Live was and everything. And that was like our Derek and Clive. Did you go and watch him live? I did. I saw the thir- the fourth and the fifth one live. Did I see the third one? I might have seen the third. No, I didn't. Hooligans Island was the third one. I saw the fourth and fifth live. And I saw the new Statesman live. Mm. But I didn't see. I would love to have seen that first one. Oh, yeah, I just love the set and everything about it. It's just brilliant. Um, 
but yeah, sorry, everybody go on completely off topic. That was whiff of ginger. That's why I always use that. Yeah. <laughs> and I still don't know. And what that's it means. weirdly, that's what the guy who won the first London Marathon said as he as he won. Yeah. yeah. Not no, a the guy came ginger. third, he said, not a whiff of ginger. <laughs> you think you people always think this this podcast goes off track and has nothing to do with but it's it, it? it's always always works out in the end. So if you okay, so those two guys go over the line together, holding mm. hands, beautiful moment for mankind. Yeah. A, a person kind. And then the person behind them are they now third place? They're now third place. That's not. And right, then I looked they into it. Second. He got so angry he didn't win. Is this true? He murdered. <laughs> Did he? he? He murdered Dick Beardsley, <laughs> one of the winners. And Ings Simonson was so upset that Dick Beardsley was killed, he moved to Nigeria and uh, started a diamond mine. <laughs> I thought you were genuinely reading this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I just would have liked it if it ended with you. They said the small small bit of humanity you had died with Dick Beardsley. (laughs) And then he moved to, to, and all because of the London Marathon, moved to Nigeria and says here 500,000 plus deaths attributed (laughs) to his mind. So there you go. It's it's fun. It's it's not never a fun run, is it? Uh. Never. Hey, I tell you what, though, they did raise £300 for cancer research. <laughs> <laughs> so fair play. Yeah. <laughs> have still no cure, though. Ooh, thanks, Dick Beardsley. <laughs> yeah, he used to go to the mine, he'd get child soldiers, and he'd, he'd have a gun, he'd shoot in the air, and the, f- the first to get to Diamond was allowed to eat. Ing Simonson, not a great guy, good runner. <laughs> So that's there, the, the bloody part <laughs> of the first London Marathon. The legacy it's left. Oh. Horrible. Oh, I'm glad um, I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Mozart's Undiscovered Symphony, February 1981. It's they nice. found it? Yeah, they found one. Where was it? Piece of music. Uh, he wrote by the, at the age of nine while living in London. He lived in fucking, what? Yeah, yeah. Mozart lived in London, do you know that? Roosevelt stayed in Preston. yeah. You know, Stalin got chased through East London by Dockers. Really? Mm-hmm. Before he was before only he was... they caught him. I know. Only kicked... been a bit faster. Only been a Beardsley. Yeah, kicked him in. A... Kicked him in the river. Um... <laughs> kicked him in the river. <laughs> I thought of him. Yeah, so see, an- another run Lola. that ended badly. You know. Yeah. Here we go. Nice Logans. Yeah. So they found the symphony mm. in a bundle of 107 manuscripts that had been purchased from an anonymous seller for about three hundred thousand dollars. And they had a um, a concert where they performed it. Imagine your work at nine being performed and Oof. sold for three hundred thousand dollars. Do you reckon he would have seen any of that money though? I mean, this is nineteen eighty one. Mm. He's he's been dead for what? <laughs> <laughs> when did this happen? He he was he wrote it in seventeen sixty five. Phil. Oh my god! I thought it was, was the time. He, he, he would have <laughs> been six oh five. Yeah. Nine years old. What? You could say he might. Uh, he, he, was, he was pretty good at music, wasn't he, Mozart? You might have said that, yeah. Yeah. Who was your favourite, Mozart or a Little Richard? <laughs> I think Little Richard, easily. Yeah, he was better, wasn't he? Yeah. What about Mozart or Lil Dicky? <laughs> <laughs> is that a rapper? I don't know. I've heard, I've heard the name. It's a bow tie, isn't it? There's probably a rapper, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's probably a rapper just, called just Lil Dicky. It's a child. <laughs> Bota. The names for rapping is like the baby. The <laughs> like baby. The baby. I always, uh, I've started doing rap in my act. Please say that's not true. It's true. I finished my Edinburgh show with a, a freestyle. Are you, are you serious? I'm not this genuine true. That's how I end the show now. How do you feel about Can that? Can I hear the rap? Well, it changes from day to day depending on who's in the audience. So you do a rap, but give us the framework of this. So I go around explaining what the freestyle rap is and the cringing looks on everyone's faces is is warranted. You put a cap on. Yeah. And then I go around getting suggestions, which takes me around 15 minutes to get all the <laughs> suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> and then I rap about them. Hey, you, discuss, you're actually lying, I discuss how I'm going to work them into a rap. It's my favourite bit of the show. And you being, really... You're lying. I'm not genuinely. Seriously. I'm not lying. If you come to my Edinburgh show, you'll see a freestyle improv rap. Or a, at man, the end. a man at the end. Is yeah. what you're <laughs> it works better if I was posh, but I, yeah, worry what you've got. No, go go ahead. <laughs> All right, Phil. That's yeah. 
on the... Something to look forward to, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it really is. 15 minutes at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Gathering suggestions. The what actual was... rap that lasts for about 30 seconds. What was the show where you had a show behind the show? This is So Phil does these <laughs> mental shows where he'll have two audience members plant that will start a fight during the show. You, you pay yeah, that yeah. guy... To pretend he's on a stag doing yeah. drink and abuse people in the queue. But you see, it backfires now. So last year in Edinburgh, and the second day, I just had loads of these, loads of pissed old men in the back raff one day. <laughs> they just came in with cans. And because the staff at the venue were just 18 yeah. year olds, and bless them, didn't know how to say no to someone coming in. They just let these alcoholics in the back who were just sat there with bags of cans. So I was going, and they were talking. And I was like, guys, can you stop talking? I went, look, I went, there's not enough people in here for you to get away with this. Mm -hmm. And the problem is everyone thinks this is part of the show and it's not. Yeah, because everyone's used to yeah. your pranks. Yeah, because they, they interrupt and they were like, we'll haggle and went, I don't want to, we'll have to fight you. I said, I will fight you. <laughs> but someone's going, I can hear people going, they're part of the show. Yeah. I went, they're not. <laughs> they're not. They're not part of the show. And, it, and honestly, in the end, it ended up after 40 minutes, I managed to convince them just to go. And I was like, thanks for coming. But like, honestly, you, sh you are better off just in the street somewhere drinking because you can't. <laughs> so I convinced him to leave and I'm not joking I went back to do and it, the show wasn't ready at this point anyway so it was already a shambles and then I went back on stage and I heard someone go they'll come back dressed as hedgehogs uh, <laughs> I was like they're not coming back had, what did you have didn't you what was a guy coming in a bear costume and you had a whole thing Phil paid a guy to come into his show and say, you're overrunning, it's my show next, the bear show. It's the show. bear show, it was Will Duggan's, the bear and show. And then so but Phil would pay... end up in a fight with this yeah. guy. <laughs> and the so, audience thought it was real, didn't they? Yeah, because <laughs> I would I would pay someone for an hour a day to fly the bear show dressed as a bear. So when it happened, people thought it was a real show. Yeah. Sean Walsh took a flyer up to Mick Fair. I used to have a, so the flyer was so funny. It was a really horrible drawing of three rapping bears with like gold chains. <laughs> and the quote on it was my favourite. Michael J. Dolan, a great comedian, doesn't really work that much anymore. He designed it. And the quote on it was so funny. It was um, almost the best hour of bear-themed hip-hop <laughs> comedy I've seen this year. <laughs> Three stars. <laughs> it was like, so Sean Walsh going, look at this, who puts a three-star review on the fight? Right. Mick Weather's not a real show, it's Phil's fake And show. so what, he'd come in 45 minutes in and So say, they'd be flying around the venue for an hour a day. So that cost me fucking a stupid amount of money. <laughs> yeah, you, so, and they'd be going, come to the Bear Show. Lot. And because there's no investment in that person to sell the show because it doesn't exist. So then when it happened, <laughs> because everything goes wrong, and I'm going, what are you doing? I'm not, I've got the room till 10 past six. He goes, no, you haven't, it's six. And I go... No, it's ten past, but we've had fire alarms going off, so I've had to go out and do it. In the, we used to go out into the, <laughs> we used to go out the beer garden, and um, <laughs> and it'd be like families just sat there waiting. But the fire alarm, me, we'd have to go out. So the staff would come in. It was done really straight. Like we had to go out, and, but so much has gone wrong. I was like, it's so obvious this must be fake. So I'd be like, fuck's sake. So I go, how long have we got? And Jim would go like, we're gonna have to crack on my tech. Jim so you've set off the fire alarm every day. Yeah. So the fire alarm go. <laughs> so then we have to. It wasn't a real fire alarm. It was just a fire. Alarm. So we have to go out. So we're out in this beer garden. We're all there, and I go. Like, what? I said, I'm going to have to crack on. I go, so anyway, where's my mum's dead, right? So it's all about my mum dying and then me finding my real dad who was in prison. <laughs> so they go, my mum's dead. mum's not dead. No, she's not dead. <laughs> I'm not adopted. It's called Unplanned Orphans. So it was about me finding out I was adopted at 30. <laughs> So and then uh, so I'm in the beer going, going, eh, is this? And then I remember once it used to make me laugh. So there'd be just families and that sat there watching. There's this family of kids. And they're going, oh, and I went, oh, sorry, guys, have you got a ticket for the show? And they go, no. I said, well, you're a fuck off then. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, Jim, block him, and he just stand in front of him. I go, fucking cheap pricks. They go, my mum's dead, right? <laughs> and then we go back in. So then I get to the end, and then the bear had come in. And he go, it's the motherfucking bear show. And it looked ranky. He had this shit mask. He had a vest that said, all the sexy girls come up to me. <laughs> Which I found in a pound, found in a charity shop. <laughs> all these chains on. And he'd uh, and I go, what's going on? And he go, well, he goes, I've got the room till six. And I go, no, I've got it till ten past. And I go, and then my tech Jimmy go, no, it's six. I go, well, why haven't I seen this prick before? He goes, well, because you're always underrun. I go, you're right, we're really underrun, they don't believe, but all these mistakes are meant that we're... I went, oh, God. And I was trying to show a video of me meeting my real dad for the first time. <laughs> so it's just me waiting outside a cafe, and I go, yeah, he was late, I don't know how to edit. So it's just me for five minutes. <laughs> So I just sat there. So we're all watching this. And then the bear would just sit at the front going, fucking ridiculous. It's like, you know, you get your end time, you get your out time. It's And then, and then he'd start chatting with people around. i go, do you mind having a bit of respect? i go, oh, here he comes. And he'd go, I can't be asked. So he'd just start the bear show. So this rapper come on, and it was the most horrific rap. So it'd be like, 
Humpty Dumpty sat on my dick. And I'm going, oh, God. And then my dad would come in and go, it's me, he's telling me how much he loves me. And he goes, Goldilocks was a fine piece of ass. And I'm going, he's saying he missed me. And, and then I'd just get angry and leave. And I go, oh, fuck it. And then the bear show would just carry on for another 10 minutes of this awful rap. And people would just be sat there with the bear show. And then eventually they, they go, if you haven't got a ticket for the bear show, can you leave, please? So then everyone would come out. And then there'd be another bear flying, exit flying. And I'd end up having a big <laughs> fight with them. <laughs> it cost me so much money. I'd lost about eight grand. <laughs> So no I'd start fighting the bear. <laughs> Matt Gray, the comedian, said his favourite moment was he just was sat waiting for the show after me. Mm. But Victoria Wood was there and she was just completely confused because I started having a fight with the bear. But I picked a guy who had Asperger's and I forgot he'd really go into it. So once he ripped my jacket off me, so I had no clothes on. <laughs> and then he'd empty a bin and just put it on my head so I'm fucking kicking me around. So she just watched. Did baffled. she go and watch your show? No, she was just in the beer garden. So she just saw a man fight with a bear <laughs> and so we'd run funny. around. We'd just run around this beer garden and he'd be kicking the would, shit would out of Would the audience stay to watch that? So they would stay to watch. That's they'd come sad. out because I'd be getting angry going, we stop fucking... Stop exit flying. Stop exit. And then I'd push them on the floor. I'd try and make them eat the flyers and then they'd overpower me. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a lot of fun. What but year yeah. was that? 1981. <laughs> <laughs> when was that? 20? 20, 20, 10 years ago, 2013, yeah. Fuck. And did that, that, was that a hit show? Should no, so like... no one was coming. But I paid for PR and everything. But I, it was done by an agency, so they had to pay them back. Um, but no one came. So I kept saying to the PR person at the beginning I was like we're going to get really bad reviews people think it's wrong like it's gone wrong on purpose but that'll be funny and then eventually we should get good reviews yeah. and we can play them off each other and weirdly that year I had a big post outside the loft bar where all the acts go to get what well, they used to there and go to the loft bar and get pissed and yeah, yeah, yeah. so I put all my two star reviews on that which is why people then started talking about it and they're like, oh that's interesting why has he put two stars because my first review was my favourite Broadway baby um it was someone their first review ever, I think, and it was um, Paul Ellis's show is a series of errors. <laughs> Paul, <laughs> so Paul Ellis's show is a series. <laughs> first of words, errors. you know. That's put so that good. And then another one going. I'm still not sure if the fire alarm was real. <laughs> Two stars. <laughs> and then someone reviewed it, but they gave me like a three star because they tried not to ruin it. Yeah, it was the worst review I've ever. Okay. So I just put that on. So and then it, so it, it was weird. So it set the groundwork for the one that did well the year after. Because yeah, enough, everyone was used to your japes by then. Yeah, so like, so towards the end, you get like Bo Burnham would come and no and, way, really. Yeah, and um, and did, you, did he enjoy it? He did. Yeah, he was trying, chatting to me about how it worked afterwards. Which Fuck, was quite, that's but great. I'm still, still waiting for a call back. Yeah, sure. yeah. But then it, and then Josh Widdicombe came and some like, really nice people who would then talk to people about it, which was nice. Yeah, so Josh would tell mouth. people, Josh and his partner. Yeah. So that was really nice. And then, so then when I did the kids show, enough people went, oh, it won't be a kids show because that guy's the one who did the bear thing. Yeah. So that's why I thought I could get away with this kids show that wasn't really a kids show, but it was for kids. So that was the thing. So like, it kind of really helped And which me. was the one where you had a show behind it when they're having a great time? No, yeah, that was it, 2000. And so it was... Yeah, that was I did a whole show about how much I hate improv. <laughs> yeah, and behind you, and then behind me was a, a an improv group. So, so what did you do? You rented out. A... I got paid for a curtain to play. It cost me five hundred. <laughs> this is why I've got no money. Yeah. And it, we, I did it at the underbelly, and it was in this curved room. Mm. The, I think it was called the White Belly or something. Like that. And um, so I had to pay for a rigging thing to be put in, which was another five hundred quid. Then I had to get the curtains made. So at the end. As I'm having, I'm stood in a chair trying to hang myself. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> it's got so wrong. I tried to kill myself. So I'm stood. I get someone to pull the lead, the mic lead. And yeah. I'm stood there going, ah. so I saw kick the fucking chair. So some times people did, and uh, <laughs> uh, that, well, that's why I got banned from the Pleasants because I was hanging at the Chortle Fast Fringe. Someone took the chair away, and I was just, I was actually dying. Really? <laughs> yeah, really? I was because, so at the Fast Fringe, you do three minutes. Yeah. So I came out, and, I, and the Chortle just gave me three stars that year for that show. And I was like, you fucking arse. I was like, I threw it over the rigging. And I did that. I got on a chair and I got someone to pull it. So I went, right, someone kick the chair. This is what you want. But I looked. When I threw it over the rig and I saw that the rigging moved, I went, well, that doesn't look very stable. Oh. And then this guy just got up and I was like, going, he's not really going to. And he just went, Pfft. so then I went, Pfft. so I started hanging. I was going, ah, fuck. Like, I broke my neck. <laughs> so I was going, ah, fuck. But I thought, well, I can't grab the rigging because it might come down and I don't want to. It would kill someone if it came down. So I was like, well, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> so I was just hanging, going, ah, that. 
and Joey Page, luckily. Rob Comet kills 40 yeah, people. Yeah. <laughs> Short or fast print. <laughs> three, three stars, five dead. <laughs> and then... Uh, and Joey Page, I turned the screen round so you could have a screen with your show details on. He just turned it back round so people could see what time I was on whilst I was hanging. <laughs> yeah, I was like, no, yeah. I'm actually Joey. Who was it who saved me now? But someone came over and saved, grabbed me and held me up so I could run Fuck. Down. But it, so you had the cur- curtain and then behind the curtain was a show that everyone Yeah, yeah, enjoyed. so that would open. It would, And by the time the, the curtains opened, half the audience have gone back stage. So every time I go out the room, someone comes out from behind the curtain. So it looks like the back of the room and it's about 40 minutes in when I go off. Someone comes out and everyone's like, oh, what the fuck's that? And then they just drag half the audience in. Uh. So they keep coming out and getting people. So by the end of it, there's only like 10 people left in my show and the rest were behind the curtain. And then I'd go like, what the fuck is the point of this? And I've got this like panda video I keep playing that makes me happy. So it's like pandas coming down a slide, <laughs> baby pandas. And then at the final time I go, oh, pandas! And they put it on and it's just all on fire coming down and like, blowing up. Like, oh my what, God. what did they say to the audience when they went behind the curtain? Just So laugh. they just tell them to be quiet. Okay. And then eventually the curtains open and it's an improv group performing to a full room. And I was like, and they've got the lighting rig in that. I've got no, I've just been on the floor doing the act. Like, they've got a fucking light. You wasted all the good part yeah, of the stage yeah. for them. And who's the improv group? So that was Finn Taylor and Matt Ewins. And, and the show was meant to be so different. And they helped shape that into the show it was. It took, again, it took about 10 days probably to get it right. But originally it was going to be that the, it, that kept opening. And they pretend and to be an be improv show. guys, yeah. and I bet they were great. They're fucking funny, those two. Oh, yeah, it was brilliant. So then at the end, and then the curtains would go back down, and then all the audience would be hidden. So I used to have a back bit. So then I'd go, oh, God, this is awful. And then, and then, it'd, um, and then, and then I'd open, the curtains would open again, and then there was no one in there. Mm. I can't remember how we did this, but it was great. So they'd all be hidden around the back, all the audience now, and there'd just be 10 people now watching this bit of the show. And it would be Matt Ewins as a caretaker sweeping up, and I'd go, well, where? Where's the improv group? And he go, improv group, brother. Improv group burnt down 15 years ago. What are you talking about? <laughs> I go, like, what? And I go, are you the caretaker? He go, no, you're the caretaker. You've always been the caretaker. And then it would just, just zoom in like the shining a bitch on me. <laughs> so that was it. So Matt Ewins and Finn Taylor really helped make that what it Your was. Your Edinburgh's must be stressful. Uh, and I gave them a <laughs> bottle of rum each as a thank you. Um, <laughs> what, at the end, not a yeah, day? Yeah, yeah. I think they, they were expecting a bit more than that. <laughs> But, yeah. Heard from them recently? No, I think they still are <laughs> slightly angry about it. <laughs> I know Finn brings it up every time I see him. Do you not have, is it not just hell? Because Edinburgh's hard enough, is that not? Or maybe it takes your mind off it, you've got so much to do. Yeah, I like it. I just like messing it because it's like, it's I do. It's fucking funny. It's amazing. I watched it when I watched your show. It was great. It's because it's not, no one else is doing that stuff. Thanks, Pat. But it's pretty, it's like I spend all year gigging. Like I have to earn my living from just going around doing clubs, yeah. which I like doing, but it's, sometimes it's like, oh, fucking hell, here we go. I've got to just, come on, get me a chair. What do you do, you do for a living? And then yeah, so in, yeah. for a year, and I've done it now, so it's cost effective. I don't waste lots of money now. I've got, I get a venue that I don't have to pay a lot for. I don't pay for PR. But, um, yeah, so I just enjoy it because you can't do all that anywhere else. So like this year, it's just I've got a band on stage, which is just two old blokes, one with a one drum and a guitar. Yeah. So every time I do something, how do you get these people like, up there? What are they doing for accommodation? Uh, well, they live there, so with this, and I go like how a minimum fee, which I should have done years ago. But I, I, I used to always think I'd make more money, and I'd end up losing thousands. So I was like, so now I do a fixed fee. So like, it's not much, but in Edinburgh, if you go, it's you're not going to if you're there anyway, and you want to do a show, you get fifteen quid a day, mm. which is nothing. But do you know what I mean? It just means that you're for not hour, yeah, that's taking right. the piss. And then if it do well in the bucket. You can give them more money and things. Yeah. I mean, I never do. I mean, no. Um, <laughs> yeah, <there's that. laughs> it's good to say that. Though, isn't it? Sorry, I've not talked about 1981. No, it's fine. What else happened? The uh, <laughs> the curtain you used in your show, weirdly, yeah. that's when it was made. 1981? Yeah. <laughs> hey! No, I don't, I don't think it was. I don't have a clue. I'm just trying to tie it in. Well, I think we've covered 1981, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> what else happened? <laughs> and what, we, oh, loads. Prince Shall we continue it, do a two-parter, do it continue it in the Patreon? We can carry on the Patreon, but we're yeah. going to tell Phil's horrible uh, showbiz stories in the awesome. Patreon. Great. Oh, God, gonna, are we? We're going to talk about his clashes with famous people, his rise to the top. Oh, no, there's his no His plummeting crash right. to the bottom. <laughs> too many fucking people. <laughs> tune, tune in. We're out of time. We've still got loads to do, but we're out of time on this episode. So tune into the Patreon. Phil, you want to plug anything? Yeah. 
I was trying to think of a plug joke, so I'm not going to do them. Um, <laughs> weak, weak, very weak. Uh, I'll come to see my Edinburgh show, please. 2nd to 27th of August, no days off. Comedy never sleeps. Or <laughs> wakes up in my show. No. Uh, 12.30 p.m. at the Monkey Barrel Hive 2. Be there. <laughs> Don't cheap. Just pay what you want. Phil Ellis is excellent comedy show. Phil Ellis, everyone, thank you so much. And thank you to our super genius patrons, Spencer, Matthew and Christopher. Good eggs. That was another episode of The Year Is. Thank you very much for listening. Please like and subscribe. Leave us a review. It all helps. I'd like to thank our producer, Jody, And also I'd like to thank uh, Josh Weller for our intro music and song. It's, uh, it's very catchy. It's very nice. I'm sure you'll enjoy it at the beginning. So big thanks for Josh Weller. He's on Instagram at Josh Weller. Josh Weller. Follow him and uh, keep spreading the word of The Year Is. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>